Ladies and gentlemen, it has been a minute. It has been over one year since I have uploaded a best loadout video for Warzone. And the reason for that is simple. I wasn't playing the game enough. I wasn't enjoying it enough and I wasn't playing it enough to give you the best tips that I could or should for this type of video. So I simply didn't upload it. But with the season two update, the addition of Ashika Island, and of course, all of the updates, fixes and changes, I have been enjoying Warzone a lot more. And because of that, what I've been doing is playing it a lot more. And because I have, I have figured out a lot of really good and cool weapons to use, loadouts to use, and I really think that this will help you guys when playing Warzone. Now, if you have never watched one of my loadout videos before, generally speaking, I have certain loadouts that do better in certain type of game modes, and you'll see what I mean as we go through here. There are loadouts that I think will do good for a very long period of time, whereas other things that I think will probably get nerfed into the ground relatively quickly, or if not quickly, in the next little while. As we saw with the RPK and the Fennec getting nerfed recently, the meta has changed up and that is why I'm making this video. Hopefully I am able to help you guys out. And honestly, I think these loadouts are so good that the people you're playing against are gonna need to contact their lawyers because they're gonna think that you're cheating. And speaking of lawyers and literally the worst segue ever, before we dive into the loadouts, let me first tell you about today's video sponsor. If you've been hurt in an accident, you deserve compensation, but having to search for a lawyer, dealing with all the paperwork, spending hours in meetings, I mean, finding a lawyer is hard, right? That is where you're wrong. Submitting an injury claim with Morgan & Morgan is easy. Morgan & Morgan has a modernized injury law process so you can submit a claim and have it reviewed by a lawyer without even leaving your couch. You can sign documents, upload pictures, share medical records, doctor's bills, all from your phone. You can even text message your attorney and case manager without having to go into an office. In fact, when you are injured in an accident, hiring an attorney is one of the first things you should do. And with Morgan & Morgan, submitting a claim is so easy, more than 3 million have trusted Morgan and Morgan when they have been injured in an accident. So if you're ever injured in an accident, check out Morgan & Morgan where you can submit a claim in eight clicks or less. And then you can have America's largest injury law firm fighting for you. You can get started at forthepeople.com or dial pound law. That's pound 529 from your cell phone. Or of course, you can check out that link down in the description. And of course, thank you Morgan & Morgan for sponsoring the video. So we have not yet talked about loadouts on this channel at all when it comes to Warzone. So I first have to tell you what I'm using for perks, what I'm using for lethals, and what I'm using for tacticals. Now, I just want to start this out by saying I've been playing solos, so my class is a little bit adjusted for that. I will make a few adjustments if you're playing quads or trios or even duos, and I'll go through that as we talk about it. So first of all, for my perks, what I pretty much use on every single one of my classes is overkill, double time, and resupply. Get your grenades back, move faster, and use two weapons weapons pretty straightforward the last perk is where things are going to change a little bit as far as your last perk goes when i play solos i use high alert when i play quads trios or duos i use quick fix because you're going to get even in more back-to-back -back gunfights and quick fix is going to be more useful there and solos it's not as useful and high alert is because the ttk is so fast that is at least what my thought is on it it might change for you similarly when we look at our tacticals and lethals i almost always use drill charges i just like them i know a lot of people don't but i really enjoy them if someone's in a vehicle if someone's in the other side of a room camping that's what i like to use and then heartbeat sensor i only use in solos if not either use smoke or stuns completely up to you now into the actual weapons Now, the first weapon we are looking at here is the TAC-56. Now, the reason why I put this one first is because I don't see it changing anytime soon. When it comes to the TAC-56, it is just super easy to use. It does not have necessarily the best time to kill. What it does have is super, super good recoil, very easy to use, good with attachments, and you're going to see a lot of people using it, and I don't think they're going to touch it because this is a very predominant weapon in ranked play, and they don't like changing weapons that are really good in ranked play. So if you want a weapon you can get used to and use for a long period of time i really think this is it now as far as the attachments that i'm using i'm using the harbinger barrel on top of that the edge 47 grip the 556 high velocity rounds the 40 round mag you can switch this up switch it to a laser if you're playing solos completely up to you and then the fss combat grip but as far as the tuning on this First off, we have the Harbinger Barrel. This one I'm making faster for aim down sights and bullet velocity. This is going to be my long range weapon here. Bullet velocity is important. And the recoil is already so good, you don't need to make it better. So you might as well have better aim.
game down sights time. We are going to make up some recoil control with the Edge 47 grip, though. This is an attachment you're going to see on almost all of my class setups. Um, so this one, we're going to go better recoil stabilization and then better idle aim stability. Um, aim walking speed just isn't a huge deal because this is going to be my long range weapon on this class. For the high velocity rounds, we're going to get take a little bit better damage range over the recoil smoothness and higher bullet velocity. Again, this is our long range weapon. And then finally, for the combat grip, we're once again improving recoil steadiness and aiming idle stability. You don't need that super fast sprint to fire speed because of our second weapon. Now, the second weapon we are using here is the Lockman Sub, aka the MP5. I love this weapon, and I think it's just because I've been using the MP5 for so many years in Warzone. It just feels right to use it. It doesn't necessarily have the fastest time to kill for SMGs, but it is close, and again, it is very easy to use. A lot of the weapons we are going to look at today aren't necessarily the best time to kill wise, but with the amount of recoil I have, just so, so easy to use. Now this, we are gonna tune a little bit differently and it's gonna be for faster play, those up close engagements. And you'll see what I mean as we go through here. So starting out with our laser, we are using the VLK laser. This one, you're gonna have faster sprint to fire speed and aim down sight speed as well. Now, the one thing I will say about weapon tuning is when you're tuning a weapon, you're gonna to wanna to make it good for you. This is where your class setup might be a little bit different. Play a few games, adjust it, and feel better. It also may be a little bit different depending on what weapon you're using it with. Because we're using this with a good long range weapon, we can make it so that this is really good up close, but maybe has a little bit more recoil and you're not gonna use it at mid range. You could also tune it so it's better at mid range with different weapon tuning, but as a whole, this is kind of what I recommend. Now, as far as our barrel goes, we are using the L38 Falcon barrel. This one, we are going to improve recoil because aim walking speed isn't too huge, and then aim down sight speed, you're gonna see that over and over again on this weapon. For under barrel, we're using the lock grip. And as far as this one goes, you're going to improve your hip walking speed because hip recoil control really doesn't matter. And you're going to be running around with this weapon. So you want a faster speed. And then once again, going hard in on the aim down sight speed to win those up close encounter. I'm using the 40 round mag on this. If you're playing solos, you might not have to, but you do go through ammo pretty quickly. So I do recommend it. And then finally, the Lockman TCG rear grip. This one, once again, going all in on the aim down sight speed and sprint to fire speed. This is your up close weapon. And as far as this weapon goes, just up close, it absolutely shreds. It is easy to use and it pairs really good with that TAC-56. So for this second class, it is a strange one. I'm using the TAC-M with the Chimera. Now there's a reason for this. And the reason is the TAC-M is essentially a sniper rifle. It uses sniper ammo and it has a really good time to kill, but you have to hit multiple bullets with it. Because of that, we're gonna design it for good recoil control and good range and bullet velocity. And the time to kill will follow. You just have to hit your bullets. In quads, I do not like this weapon as much. You just go through too much ammo and it just does not down enough people. But if you're playing solos, it is really good, especially with the Chimera, because it, in my opinion, is the best just all around weapon in this game. It's great at mid range. It's great at short range, has great mobility. And because of that, it's really good in almost every situation. Hence why we're pairing it with a weapon that's really only really good at long range. Now, as far as the attachments that we're using, we're using the 3.4X optic. We're using the FSS combat grip, the 20 round mag, just because the mag is really small and you're going to need to hit multiple bullets with it. The edge 47 grip, like I said, you're going to see that one a lot. And the Custovia DX90 muzzle. As far as the tuning goes for the muzzle, you are going to go with aim down sight speed just because the recoil is pretty good on this one. And then going all in on that bullet velocity. Like I said, this is our long range weapon. After this, the edge 47 grip, we have improved recoil stabilization and aiming idle stability again for the long range. You don't always need aiming idle stability, but when you're using it as a long range weapon, it's much more important. For the FSS combat grip, going once again to that recoil steadiness and aiming st idle stability. And finally, for the optic, we're gonna improve our aim down sight speed here. The reason why I didn't do flinge resistance is basically when I'm shooting someone with this, I'm in solos and a lot of the time, they're not shooting back. If you're having trouble with flinch, you can switch this though. And whenever we're using an optic, we always go with the furthest eye position possible. Now the Chimera, if there is one weapon you look at today that you're gonna try out and you're gonna use and you're gonna use it frequently, it is this one. This is an amazing class. This is definitely one you wanna check out. So as far as the attachments for this, you're gonna use the 6.5 EXF OP40 barrel. On top of that, the Sakin Tread 40, the Edge 47 grip, the Quick Fire laser, and finally the Bruin GR 500 rear grip. So starting out with that, we are going to go with recoil steadiness and sprint to fire speed. This one I design a little bit different because I want it good at short and mid range, not just short range. Hence why I'm using it with a long range weapon. 
Then we have the Edge 47 grip. This one we're going with aim down sight speed and aim walking speed, again, because we still want it good at short range. Uh, but all in all, this gun has pretty good recoil control to begin with, so you don't have to go in on all in on recoil stabilization. For the second tread, we are going to go with recoil stabilization on this one and gun kick control. That gun kick control makes a big difference, and I think it's the most important probably weapon tuning on this one. For the barrel, we're going to go with recoil steadiness and damage range because, again, I am using this at mid-range. If you were just using it at short range, you can switch that out for aim down sight speed. And then finally, with the laser, we are going to go to sprint to fire speed and aim down sight speed. This is where you're going to get the quickness on this class. Now, when it comes to these classes, essentially all you need to know is each class has a long range weapon and a short to mid range weapon. As far as this one goes, the RAL is the TTK god right now. However, it is hard to use. It has a lot more recoil than a lot of the other weapons that we are going to talk about, but it absolutely melts people. This is a weapon that is going to be better for more skilled players. And on top of this, the movement capabilities with this one just are a little bit slow. You aim down sights really slow. You move really slow. You reload really slow. So we're going to be using it with a submachine gun, as you're going to see here. As far as the attachments we are using this one, we're using the AMOP V4. I use this on a lot of my weapons, as you're going to see. I'm using the Strip 40 grip, the XRK Dune grip, the Shred CP90, and the 21-inch barrel. Now, as far as the tuning goes, we are going to go with recoil steadiness and damage range. Again, you can make it so that all you tune is recoil steadiness, but you do move really slow with this one, so you're going to want to keep that in mind. But again, it's probably the hardest weapon to use on this list, except for maybe the Tac M. As far as the shred goes, we're going to go once again all in with recoil stabilization and gun kick control. Again, you need it on this weapon. With the dune grip, you're going to go again recoil stabilization and aiming idle stability for that improved stability. With the strip 40, again, recoil steadiness, aiming idle stability. And then the one area where you're going to make up your aim down sight speed is with your optic. With this one, you're going to go with aim down sight speed and once again, that furthest eye position. So because we're using a weapon that you move very, very slow with, you're going to want an SMG, something along those lines. You can switch this out for the MP5 like we talked about before or the fennec as we're going to talk about in a minute uh, but as far as this one goes i'm tuning it to move quickly with it and be good at short range starting off with the olev laser this one we're going to go sprint to fire aim down sight speed with the kas barrel this one's a little bit weird i actually left the ads and damage range right in the middle i found it didn't need to be touched but we are going to go a little bit towards aim walking speed um, for the underbarrel, the shark fin, we are going to go aim down sight speed and aim walking speed. That's just going to help you a little bit with those close quarter engagements, move a little bit faster while you're aiming and shooting and that kind of thing. With the true tack grip, we are going to go aim down sight speed and sprint to fire speed pretty heavily. And then with the stock, we are going to go aim down sight speed and aim idle stability, just because every once in a while you do want to get in a mid-range fight with this one. And the next class is a little bit different than the one we just looked at. And the reason is the Sakin has a decent time to kill. Not as good as the Ral, but it is way, way easier to use. It has much less recoil. And if you're not as good of a player, this is the LMG that I would recommend right now instead of the RPK. This is essentially the new RPK. So what we're using on this one is the 20 inch Bruin Silver, the Sakin Tread 40, the Edge 47 grip once again the Bruin Q900 grip wrap, and once again, the same optic that we just looked at. As far as the tuning goes, we're going with something very similar as far as possible and a little bit towards aim down sight speed. Again, this one has a little bit better recoil, actually a lot better recoil, so you don't need to quite tune it as much for that, but we are still going to because with the rear grip, we're gonna go recoil steadiness and aiming idle stability. Again, it is your long range weapon. You still do want good recoil with it. Speaking of which, as far as the Edge 47 grip, go towards recoil stabilization and aiming idle stability the Sakin Tread 40 same thing gun kick control again another really important stat and recoil stabilization and finally as far as the barrel goes again recoil steadiness and then damage range is very important this is our long range weapon with this class setup we're using our other weapon is really only good up close so you do want this one to be good at long range hence damage range recoil steadiness now 
This one, I will say, you can tune a little bit differently if you find that this is already very easy to control. You can take off a little bit recoil steadiness and change it for some movement properties, but this is kind of what I've liked, and especially because we are using the Fennec as our secondary weapon. Now, as far as the Fennec goes, it got nerfed, it got nerfed pretty hard, but it's still a bullet hose and it dumps people up close. And because of that, it is still a very good weapon to use. It's just not as good as it used to be. But you only want to be using it up close, and that's what we are going to make this class for. This one also pairs very well with a good long-range assault rifle with the TAC-56, for example. But as far as the tuning goes, we're going to improve the recoil steadiness just a little bit because they did nerf that. And then the sprint to fire speed, you can go a little bit heavier on this one if you want to. As far as the stock goes, we are going to go all in on aim down sight speed and aim walking speed. Again, we're using this thing up close. With the laser, again, sprint to fire speed and aim down sight speed fully. I'm also using the drum magazine, the 45 round mag. As far as this one goes, I just find you dump bullets so quickly on this one. You definitely want a larger mag. And then with the lock shot, this is the one area where we're going to make up with gun kick control and recoil stabilization. You don't need it too much. Again, just use this thing up close. And then our final class, this is our trolling class. This thing is ridiculous. And the KV broadside is definitely going to get nerfed soon. So be annoying. Use it while you can. Now, this is the trolliest weapon in the world right now. It is going to get nerfed and you will see why. As far as this class design goes, it is designed so that we never aim down sights. We only fire from the hip and we are shooting dragon's breath rounds. So for the stockless, you cannot tune it. However, the next one, the true tack grip, we are going to go recoil steadiness, even though it doesn't really matter because we're not aiming down sights. Our aim down sight speed doesn't matter. What does is our sprint to fire speed. So we're going full in on sprint to fire speed there. With our dragon breath rounds, we are going to go full damage range and full bullet velocity. You can also go with hip walking speed if you want a little bit more mobility, but I like the improved damage range of bullet velocity. With the improved choke, we're going to go almost all the way to sprint to fire speed, but our damage range is going to be improved because once again, our aim down sight speed does not matter. And then with our barrel, it's weird again. We're going with recoil steadiness completely and all the way to damage range because aiming down sights does not matter with this class. Now, if you really want, you can get rid of your choke and then put in the drum magazine. If you're playing in quads, it's not a bad decision. Again, this is super trolly. I'm guessing it's going to get nerfed. It's super annoying to play against and it absolutely melts people. And then our final weapon here is, I think, the most underrated weapon. Not a lot of people use it. I think it's because the TAC-56 is so good, but is the M4. Now, I have this one designed a little bit differently for you guys, just because I'm using it at long range. My shotgun is only good up close, so this needs to be good at mid-range. It needs to be good at long range, and that's kind of how it's designed. So once again, with the AIM OPV4, we're going to go flinch resistance and the furthest sight possible. With the sack in rear grip, we're going to go with recoil steadiness and aiming idle stability. Again, I'm using this thing at long range all the time. That's what you want it for. Similarly, recoil stabilization on the edge 47, as well as aiming idle stability. With the FTAP castle comp muzzle, you're going to go recoil stabilization and gun kick control. If you find it still too recoily, you shouldn't. But if you do, you can go a little bit further on this one. And then finally, the high tower barrel, we are going to go recoil steadiness and damage range. Again, we're using this at long range. It's going to play a little bit slower, but again, you won't need this thing up close because you're using dragon breath rounds. So those are the loadouts I am currently using. I think they're all really, really good and certain things are better in certain situations and with certain weapons. That is why I made this video. As far as the weapon tuning goes, I want to stress this again. Start with the loadouts that I have given you. Once you do, figure out what you do like and don't like about the feel of the weapon. If it moves too slow, adjust the tuning for that. If the recoil feels too bad, adjust the tuning for that and kind of find your happy place because the tuning is kind of up to you. Yes, these are kind of the best case scenarios I've given you, but base it off your play style. I've tried to make these classes so it is the best possible weapons and easiest to use. The only one aside is probably the TAC M. It's a little bit weird and I really only suggest it in solos. But if I miss some of your weapons that you're using, feel free to let me know down in the comments. If you enjoy these videos and want to see them updated more frequently when updates happen every season, every season reloaded, anything like that, hit that like button. Let me know down in the comments. I hope I helped you out. Thank you so much for watching. Until next time, peace out. We are, we are reaching for